Don't fall. Please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the court and honorable citizens, I stand before you today representing citizens of North Carolina who know that their government has defied the Constitution, a matter of profound importance that strikes at the very heart of our country's principles. This case tracks back to the intricate tapestry of redistricting in the state of North Carolina, a process laden with constitutional significance. This case began with the state's endeavor to redraw its congressional districts, a routine task following the country's census where each state will update its population numbers. However, as lines were adjusted and boundaries shifted, a district emerged that caught the attention and scrutiny of those dedicated to upholding the ideals of equal protection under the law. The plaintiffs, led by Ruth O. Shaw, think that the newly formed 12th congressional district was deliberately crafted based on race as it is majority african-american and also just look at this district they argue that this act of redistricting is not an innocent exercise of state authority but a manifestation of racial gerrymandering a violation of the very principles that define our constitution on the opposite side of this legal battleground stands the united states attorney general janet reno she asserts that this redistricting plan was born out of legitimate concern for a compliance with the Voting Rights Act of 1965, a landmark piece of legislation designed to rectify the historical disenfranchisement of minority voters. In her eyes, the creation of a majority-minority district was a necessary measure to ensure fair and equal representation for all citizens. As we stand on the precipice of the Supreme Court's hollowed chambers, the critical question before us is whether this redistricting plan, with its racial undertones, withstands constitutional scrutiny. You must grapple with the balance between acknowledging the historical injustices that necessitated the Voting Rights Act and preventing the insidious practice of racial gerrymandering as displayed in this district. In the coming moments, you will hear arguments that delve into the complexities of this case. The plaintiffs, my clients, will contend that the state's actions were not born out of a genuine commitment to rectifying historical wrongs, but instead to represent an unconstitutional prioritization of race in the redistricting process. On the other hand, the defendants will passionately defend their actions, emphasizing the need to protect the voting rights of minority populations and the delicate dance between race and representation in our democratic system. As we embark, let us remember that the decision rendered in this case will echo through the corridors of history, shaping the contours of our electoral landscape for years to come. The soul of our democracy hangs in the balance, and it is your duty, esteemed justices, to weigh the arguments before you and deliver a decision that stands as a testament to the enduring principles upon which our great nation was founded and side with my clients. Got it! Hold it! Objection! Yeah! Objection! 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 Your honors, esteemed members of the court, we now stand at the precipice of a decision that will reverberate through the corridors of justice, affecting not only the parties before you, but the very fabric of our democratic principles. As we reflect on the arguments presented during these deliberations, let us distill the, ess the essence of this case. The plaintiffs, my clients, with Ms. Shaw at the helm, have steadily maintained that the redistricting plan implemented by the state of North Carolina is constitutionally unfounded, tainted by the specter of racial gerrymandering. Our argument hinges on the fundamental tenet that the institutional use of race in the redistricting process is an affront to the principles of the equal protection enshrined in the 14th Amendment. As we have traversed the legal landscape, the evidence presented has painted a compelling picture of districts drawn not out of a principled commitment to rectifying historical injustices, but rather as a manipulation of boundaries to achieve a predetermined racial composition. The plaintiffs have demonstrated that race was the predominant factor in this redistricting equation, overshadowing legitimate concerns about compliance with the Voting Rights Act. Now, as we turn our gaze to the potential consequences of a decision that diverges from the path of constitutional rectitude, let us consider the implications of siding with the state. If this court were to condone the redistricting plan in question, we risk establishing a dangerous precedent, one that allows states to wield a sword of racial classification in the names of complying with the Voting Rights Act. Such a decision would open the floodgates to future manipulations, undermining the very essence of fair representation. We implore this esteemed court to recognize the delicate balance at play. While the Voting Rights Act is a critical safeguard against historical disenfranchisement, it cannot be wielded as authority for the intentional sorting of citizens based on race. 
the essence of our democracy lies in the equal vo voice of every citizen. Irrelevant is their racial or ethnic background. A decision in the favor of the state would condone a dangerous precedent permitting the sacrifice of individual rights on the altar of perceived greater good. It would send a chilling message that the ends justify the means, even at the expense of the bedrock principles that define our constitutional order. In closing, we ask this court to stand as a bulwark against the erosion of our democratic ideals. The decision you render will resonate far beyond the borders of North Carolina, shaping the trajectory of, our, of redistricting practices and safeguarding the sanctity of our democratic process across the nation. We implore you to side with the principles of equality and justice, striking down this unconstitutional redistricting plan and reaffirming the bedrock truth that every citizen, regardless of race, deserves equal protection and representation under the law.